Alright, what is up y'all? Today we're here with the team builder portion of the uh, week 5 of the Pokemon Community Players Draft League. We verse Diet Tight, aka Jason. Probably should have said that the other way, whatever. But uh, he has a pretty scary team actually. It'll appear on the screen about now. It consists of Mega Pinsir, Gliscor, Zerkatry, Florgus, 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 whatever the fuck you want to say, Tentacruel, Darmanitan, Ambipom, Slowking, Kofagrigus, Regirock, and Malamar. Now, it is a pretty scary team. Uh, I know personally because I drafted like the first five mons for him because <laughs> he uh, he missed the first part of the draft. But uh, yeah, it's it's scary. But I think I brought some good stuff. I, I definitely I definitely have a chance. So. Starting off, you look at his team, you see Mega Pinsir, and you see Zerkatry. And you kind of just realize that those things kind of just shit all over my team. Like, uh, my ground type isn't the best in uh, taking hits, so that's going to be a big pain in the ass. So I'm kind of forced to bring Assault Vested Electivire just to help deal with that Zerkatry. Even a uh, Spex Hidden Power Ground will not 2 hit KO me. And I can fire back with Earthquake, or if I predict a switch, I can Volt Switch and uh, do some damage. Kill him, get initiative, all that good stuff. Then next on the list, we have Diggy Smalls here. And I went back and I looked at all his battles, all four he's had so far. And every single time, he has led with a Scarf Darmanitan. And that's going to be a huge problem, because if he brings Flare Blitz, maybe Thunder Punch, uh... Earthquake, Rock Slide, something. Obviously, U Turn is going to replace one of those, but basically, he can have the coverage to kill my, or revenge kill my entire fucking team if I don't do something about it. So basically, I'm bringing Choice Scarf Dougie just so I can lead off with it, trap him, kill him, and get that thing out of the way. Now, if I lock myself into Earthquake, he will be able to come in with Mega Pinsir and get up an SD, but uh, my next Pokemon actually kind of deals with that. So, we have Earthquake, of course, Stone Edge just to hit uh, his flying things that, you know, can eat up Earthquakes, aka Mega Pinsir, and uh, just in case he wants to bring, like, Balloon or anything, just so I can have some other kind of attack to hit him. Stealth Rocks, just in case uh, I do have a chance to kind of come in and just get get something off, and, uh, I don't know, most of the time, I'm pretty much thinking I'm going to be trapping him with Earthquake. Switching out and then switching this thing in on a Kofag Willow or something like that just to a Memento so I can set up and sweep with one of my other mons. But just in case I get knocked off or something, we do have the rocks on there. And uh, like I said, Mega Pinsir is a bit of a problem because it basically gets a free plus two. But Akame here, with just a little bit of defensive investment from speed creeping said Mega Pinsir, I am guaranteed to live a, uh, a return at plus, I mean a quick attack at plus two or a, uh, a return on the switch in, and quick attack will have a chance to kill me, but if I really have to, I can always just, you know, figure something else. So I'll switch to my Intimidators or something. Uh, we are bringing the Steelium Z, so we get the Powered Up Corkscrew Crash, which is guaranteed to kill Pinsir after it has taken just a little bit of chip damage. So that'll be cool. So that's basically my plan. Lead with Dougie, Trap Darm, Revenge, Pinsir with Akame, and then start sweeping basically now my main sweeper for this week is going to be Salamence now I haven't brought this at all this uh this league and it's kinda just been sitting there it was my second pick and I was like you know what like this is this is fucked up I have to bring it at least one week I have to bring it you know uh, not that there's anything against it Salamence is an amazing Pokemon and I love the nickname I have for it if you watch Parks and Rec you will get it and you're probably pretty fucking awesome so uh you know, I can come in, hopefully I will memento on something, and then come in with this guy. Now, you can see I got a dick load of Spadef here, and that is basically so that if he brings uh, a Shadow Ball on Kofag, with no special attack investment, I think with like 40 special attack investment, he will not break my sub. Now, usually I believe he likes to run Hex and Willow, so of course we brought the sub on there just so we can block that and then start de-dancing up. Got the Crunch. And uh, I was going to bring Moxie, but the whole point of this set is to set up on the Kofag, which otherwise walls me. So, uh, I figured I'm going to get the Mummy anyways. I might as well just get the Intimidate off, first of all. And, uh, yeah, we got Crunch for coverage for all his Psychic types and whatnot. 
Dragon Claw just for stab, and then, uh, yeah, Sub and DD, of course. I love me some Sub DD, then. Sub DD mints, let me tell you. Then our good old oh shit button, Siggy here, the Sigalyph, which basically is the same thing as always, just four attacks, guaranteed to make it to where he cannot sweep me with anything. Even if uh, Akame fails to deal with Mega Pinsir, if it's taken rocks one time, even if it's just, if, if it takes rocks when it's just uh, pre evolved, just regular Pinsir, Pinsir, <laughs> Pinsir, just regular Pinsir, then uh, Ice Beam will kill. So that's good. So hopefully we can uh, we can do that. Uh, signal Beam because he does have a Malamar and it did sweep Andre, just clean sweep. So I'm not gonna let that happen. Uh, Psy Shock just for stab and then Shadow Ball for his uh, his Kofag and his slow keying and all that good stuff. And then last but not least we have our Spinner, which is Bird with a Hip on top, rocking the Rocky helmet. Ha! Uh, got the Dual Intimidate this week. It's basically just max defense. Uh, I just needed something that could deal with Ambipom, just in case he brought it, then he would probably lead with it, rather than the Darm, and I could lead with this. Get the Intimidate, uh, protect if I think he wants to go straight for the Fake Out, or I can just go straight for the Mock Punch, or the Toxic, or whatever. Honestly, I like I like making plays, so if he did lead with Ambipom, I'd probably go right for the Toxic, predicting the Kofag to come in. But, uh, we'll see how it goes, you know? And with that, we will go ahead and jump right into the battle. I think, uh, I think we got the squad here, but we'll see what he brings. Right, so here we are with the battle, and as you can see, he did not bring Mega Pinsir. That probably, in my opinion, should have came, but uh, it didn't, so that's fucking fantastic. Uh, originally, I thought uh, for sure uh, Darmanitan was coming, Tentacruel was coming, and Mega Pinsir was coming. So I got two out of three, that's not that bad, but uh, yeah, he, I don't know, It's uh, he likes to bring Scarf Zerkatry as well. So I thought maybe either one of those two would lead, and like I said, I already had a plan, so I was just going to lead right off with the Dougie. But as you can see, uh, he leads with the Kofag, and I was like, what is... fuck. <laughs> it did not work. The one week he doesn't want to lead with Scarf Darmanitan, I have a Scarf Doug Trio, which is not going to appreciate taking a Will-O-Wisp. So I sat here for like almost a full minute just like realizing how I have no switch-ins to Kofag, and uh... Yeah, I didn't know what to do. So basically, I figured since he didn't have the Ambipom, Hitmontop was going to be uh, kind of the sack here. But he misses the Will-O-Wisp. But I don't really care. I have no attack investment anyways. I'm not going to be doing shit to anybody. So, fuck it. Trade a Toxic for a Will-O-Wisp, which is cool. And then I double out, predicting him to go into Gliscor. But he actually just knocks me off. So, that works too. And, uh... Yeah, so now I'm, I'm no longer Choice Scarf, which is nice, <laughs> so I can switch up my moves and I get up my rocks, which was really going to be the only way I was going to be able to get up those fucking rocks. And then on the next turn, I could go for an attack, but I don't know if I'm going to live. Didn't feel like Kalkin, so I just straight Memento, and uh, yeah, he's looking a little rough over here. He's not doing shit. So I go to Jam, Jeremy Jam, of course, and uh, go ahead and sub up. Now the way he brought this in so fast, I figured he was physically defensive with Ice Beam. But that crunch damage shows that he was not physically defensive. <laughs> it does a dick load. And uh, then again I predict him to go out into Gliscor and I go ahead and sub up again. And uh, I kind of just want to see if he's going to be going for Stone Edges, what's he going to do to break my sub. He reveals the Ice Fang. And I did not expect him to be offensive Gliscor, because I have 24 speed on this, so I do have a little bit of speed, but he obviously shows that he has more than that, because he outspeeds me and goes for the Ice Fang. So I'm thinking, originally I thought this was going to be physically defensive, maybe mixed defensive, but something to take on, uh, what's it called, Electivire as well as Kartana, but he shows that he's offensive, and I was like, uh, okay, I can work with that. So it does kind of ruin my sweep, kind of makes me waste Dougie a little bit, but I got up rocks, so I guess that's something. So now I am forced to switch here, and I uh, figured Kartana was going to be the best bet. We eat the Ice Fang, and then I'm stuck here wondering if he has Fire Fang as well. Now he has a Darmanitan. He has a Slow King that likes to cover, that likes to have fire coverage. So in my head, I was thinking he probably doesn't have it, and I really just wanted to click SD and just starts doing stuff, but I figured he was going to have that Scarf goddamn Darmanitan or the Scarf Zerkatree, so I couldn't do that just yet. 
but I kind of just wanted to scout and just see, so we do go for the Leaf Blade, and it doesn't do that much, but I'm jolly not adamant. And then he knocks off, and he sees that it doesn't knock off an item, and he's like, oh shit, he's a Z-move, so I have to switch the fuck up on out of here. So I was like, okay, thank god. If he's smart, he'll know that some kind of, probably a Bloom Doom is coming, and it is going to blow this fucking thing away, and he needs it to kind of deal with my Salamence. Mince, mance, man, man, whatever. He needs this. So I go for the SD, predicting the switch. I don't know what he's going to switch into, but we do just sort to dance up. And we're faced with a problem here. So I jump on Cerebi, and I check out and see if Z moves do contact. It turns out they do not. So I get a plus two, and the whole point was I didn't think Akame was going to be able to sweep because I would have to touch this fucking Kafag. Kafag. Kafag it. And, uh, yeah, he was going to he was gonna get rid of my beast boosts. So I was pretty much going to be forced to SD up over and over and over again or something. But I realized that the corkscrew crash isn't going to touch him, so I go hard for that. And, uh, yeah. I flash cannon him with a corkscrew crash, and I get the attack boost. And he comes in with this, and we see he's balloon. That is no fucking match for a plus three Kartana. And now I'm plus four. And at this point, he says, looking like game, and he brings in Darmanitan. Now, I sat here for a pretty long while, too, and I didn't know if he was going to, if he was just bluffing, if he just wanted to revenge me in Flare Blitz or whatever, but I decided I'm staying in. Fuck it. If he wants to lock himself into Flare Blitz, that's just going to let me set up a Salamence some more. If he wants to uh, overpredict and go for the U-turn, I will kill this thing with the Night Slash. And uh, this thing kills everything else on his team, so I really shouldn't have risked it, but I did. But it does pay off because he has not scarfed our mana tan. Uh, he says crit mattered, it did not. I was at plus four, and now everything else is just going to die to my stab moves or uh, night slap. Well, no, stab moves, yeah. So Slow King comes out, nope, not happening. No, sir. No, sir. And then Gliscor comes back out, probably should have just stayed in with it in the first place. <laughs> and takes the Leaf Blade. And just like in our little preseason tournament, Kartana just rips through some dick. You know, Kartana is... Man, I fucking love Kartana. Everybody was hating on it because it has low special defense, times before we get to fire, its coverage moves aren't that great. But in the Draft League format, when you know that uh, what you have to prepare for and you can slap a Z move on this thing to break the walls that would otherwise wall you then I think Kartana shines very very brightly. You would think Zergatry would shine brighter than Kartana but it does not. <laughs> Jokes. But uh yeah so Akami's just sitting here floating in the fucking wind like like the little monster he or she is but uh yeah we do win. Kartana picks up six fucking kills which is fantastic and uh the whole time after this, I was just sitting there thinking, why didn't he bring Scarfed Armanitan? <laughs> but when he didn't lead off with it, I thought maybe it wasn't going to be Scarfed, but I couldn't uh, I couldn't really bank off that. You know, just because he didn't lead with it doesn't mean it's not Scarfed. But, uh, and I have a Mega Beedrill, so I thought for sure something was going to be Scarfed. But in hindsight, it was looking at it like it was probably going to be Trick Room or something like that. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Uh, we can. He will actually be joining us this week for the recap, so we can ask him then, and we can kind of go over it play by play. But uh, with that, that's gonna just about do it for week five of the PCP. I'm five and zero. Oh, I'm fucking happy. I hope you guys are proud of me because I am beating that ass all willy nilly. And we face Andre next week. And fun little fact about Andre: he has never beaten me in the draft league format. And he is actually the one that I swept six zero with Cartana. No wait, that was Chris. Uh, I swept him, no, I swept Chris with Zerkatry and, yeah, Andrew with Cartana. So he has to go up against me and the Cartana once again. It'll be a lot of fun. You know, it'll be a good time. So be hyped for that. Recap will come in a couple days. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like or whatever. I don't really give a fuck. And bye forever.